perfect storm is a deep crisis caused by the powerful combined effect of a unique set of circumstances. Today, the world is experiencing just such a perfect economic storm. Crisis, who says? None other than the highly respected World Bank. A report from this organization says, the risk exists of the global economy being battered by a perfect storm in 2016. 2016 is nearly over, but the danger of the perfect storm has grown. We want to tell you why there are threatening storm clouds and what we can do about it, must do about it. H.G. Wells, the British author and visionary, once said, civilization is a race between catastrophe and education. We can win this race if we educate ourselves to understand the problem and its solution. We believe we have a strong solution, but first, let's understand the root problem. Here is why many of you may be without a decent pension. Here are the main elements of this perfect storm as we see them. Enormous amounts of money have been created in the US and Europe. This money fuels risky investments, speculation creating a bubble, a casino economy. Households, businesses, governments, they're all deeply in debt. They borrow heavily at low interest. But interest rates will rise, perhaps soon. What then? What crisis will we face when interest rates rise, when paying back the loans becomes very difficult, maybe impossible? Populations are aging. Pension funds are not able to cover their obligations because they earn so little on their investments and because too little was saved. More and more elderly people live in poverty and young people no longer save because they feel they won't be able to set aside enough for old age anyway. So why not enjoy life while you can? Globally, economic growth has slowed. The future is not what it used to be. Saving rate is half what it was a decade or two ago. The United States, a rich country, is borrowing heavily from Asia, mostly from poor countries, and it has been borrowing for over two decades. And that huge mountain of money the central banks created? Is it being invested wisely, productively, to grow small and medium-sized businesses that create jobs? No, it's fueling a giant casino. You know, once money was borrowed and lent to build real businesses, real jobs, real products. Today, monopoly money is borrowed and lent to buy risky pieces of paper, a huge, risky, irresponsible virtual economy, a perfect storm. Worst of all, young people nearly everywhere are losing hope in the future. So they're spending all their income. The United States is still the world's biggest economy. $18 trillion in national output in 2015. There, the biggest banks have over $247 trillion in exposure to speculative pieces of paper that are based on guesses about the future, called derivatives. This is 13 times the US national debt. The money owed by the government which, by the way, means by us, the people, and 14 times the United States' annual national output. It's a ticking time bomb. Globally, these risky gambles on the future total $550 trillion, nearly seven times annual world production. And personally, my own estimate is that the total annual global transactions of a speculative nature easily add up to more than a hundred times our real annual world output. Governments and central banks have tried to clean up the mess of the great global recession after the 2008 global crash by printing mountains of money. That money mountain will likely bring the next crisis instead of resolving the current one. It's the problem, not the solution. But the situation is far from hopeless. There's much we can do, provided we act now, provided we act to make the future 
what it once was. Here are the five action points we must take together. This is not rocket science, it is plain common sense. First, work skills. According to Oxford University research, in 20 years, robots will do half the jobs people now do. So each of us must constantly update and upgrade our own work skills. Truly a matter of life and death. Second, economic growth. New technology kills some old business activities, but at the same time, it can offer new business opportunities. In the West, economic growth has slowed tremendously. To those experts who say growth will never come back, we disagree. We can accelerate growth, and we must. And here is the reason why. The population of the world is growing. There are today 7.3 billion people on Earth. In 1900, there were only 1.6 billion. In 2050, there will be 10 billion people. So if the economic pie remains the same size, the slice of it available for each person will become ever smaller. But if we increase the size of the pie through real economic growth and output per person, there will be a bigger slice of the success for everyone. Third, investment. To develop new technologies, we need investment. To develop new roads, we need investment. This applies to everything. To invest in the future, you need to reduce consumption in the present. In other words, to save. So investment requires saving. And in Western countries, we are saving far too little and borrowing much too much from the East, especially from China. Borrowing not to invest, but to spend and consume. Infrastructure investments in housing, schools, roads, communications, pays a proven social rate of return of 30% a year, risk-free. Where else can you get a return like that? Fourth, fairness. Equality or distributive justice is a key issue. There are large and growing gaps between rich and poor. In 2015, for the first time, the richest 1% held more wealth than the remaining 99% put together with better work skills, with more investment in the real economy, with growing productivity, we will achieve greater equality, not only in personal opportunities, but also in the overall distribution of the resulting prosperity and wealth. Fifth, pensions. For the past century, life expectancy has soared. In the West, in 1916, people lived to about age 50. Today, a century later, life expectancy in the West is over 80. This is wonderful. We can now enjoy more retirement years. But this is a problem too, because if we live longer, we need more retirement income, and we do not have it not even close. If we expect to work for 50 years, from age 20 to age 70, and we have to prepare retirement income for, say, at least 20 years to age 90, that means that every year we work, we have to save an amount totaling 40% of the cost of one retirement year. Because retirement years are 40% of working years. In addition, costs in the future are higher than costs in the present. This means that whatever we save over the years has to be invested in order to, at the very least, keep its purchasing power. But how many of us can afford to take 40% of our monthly income and put it away for old age? before taking into account our day-to-day -day living expenses, not even 5% of the population. This is the basic problem. Social security, you may say, 
Are you serious? Governments admit it too. Social security funds everywhere are heading for inevitable bankruptcy. And what about those of us who may live 25 years or more in retirement? What if life expectancy rises to say 100 years as some experts predict or, or even longer? What if there's a cure for cancer? Who knows how long we're going to live in future? Can we imagine ourselves left with inadequate income when we're 90 years old, whether in good health or ill health? 25 years of retirement means setting aside half your monthly income. This is an impossible task. This is the making of a personal and national nightmare. The whole idea of building our pension income for the future was originally based on much lower life expectancy and either the government using tax money to take care of us or past employers. But with prospects of 15, 20, 25, or even longer retirement years, neither government nor employers will be able to deliver anything like what we will need. If employers cannot pay their retirement obligations, they may go broke, they may collapse. Then they will neither pay the pensions they promise, nor be able to offer employment to our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We're deeply worried about the future we are passing on to our grandchildren. And this is not about dry numbers. It's about real people. It's about you. It's time to stop talking about crisis and problems and start talking about solutions, what you and we can do together. We've spoken enough about the problem. Let's move on to our proposed solution. Now, I'm an economist, but neither economists nor other social scientists, psychologists, definitely not our political leaders, have recognized the long-term challenges we face, nor come up with local and global solutions that are feasible, sustainable, and affordable. Too far off in the future, they say, let someone else deal with it. Problem is, we have to deal with it now, today. Tomorrow will be too late. Before going into detail, we have a symbol we want to share with you, the carob tree. The Jewish Talmud recounts that when you plant a carob tree, you get fruit only 70 years later. So why would elderly persons plant one? For future generations, and because their ancestors planted carob trees for them, so they would enjoy the fruit. If we don't plant the seedling, there will be no fruit when we need it. It's that simple. When the crisis breaks, we will deeply regret not planting that little tree. Here's the simple logic underlying our proposal. We call it the four pillars. Moshe, please roll it out. Here is the basic idea. A growing economy built on rising output per hour of labor will create more jobs, generate more profits, more tax income, and higher pension income to the whole population. Long-term pension income depends on three things. The size of the pension contributions in the real economy, the investments they fund, and the continuing productive growth of those investments over time. The ultimate pension income that pensioners get depends on the original contribution or saving, the rate of return on the investments, and the length of time those investments are allowed to build up. This is a very simple formula. Savings times return multiplied by time. A simple formula, but a difficult one to implement. Because all three elements have to be present and function well together over time. We want to enlist one of the most powerful forces in the world, the power of money that is invested productively for the long term and with the income plowed back instead of spent. So let's run the numbers. If you earn 5% annual return on your investment, and many responsible businesses make a great deal more than that, if you take all the income and reinvest it at 5%, 
your original investment will double every 14 years. If you start at birth with, say, $10,000 and continue to reinvest the principal and the earnings at 5%, in 70 years, when you retire, you will have a capital of $320,000, or five doublings. We are, in fact, proposing a new concept, a new system for long-term economic growth, a new method founded on wise investment in the real economy, a focus on creating value-added products and services, creating jobs, opportunities, and greater prosperities. The new concept is based on making the overall economic pie much bigger, and so that the slices which the individual consumes are bigger too. Those are fine words, Moshe, but we have to show concretely how to make this happen. Our economic structure has four strong pillars. They are closely related. The first pillar is a special levy. To build anything new requires money. We all know that. To build a new force in the real economy needs a great deal of money. We believe that if we all share in the investment cost, we can use small individual amounts to gather vast amounts of capital for productive investment. Today, this is called crowdfunding. We propose to raise initial capital at the modest cost of about 99 cents per day per household, roughly equivalent to the cost of four to five slices of bread per day per household. The poorest one-fifth of all households will have the option not to pay. Now, the cost of the special levy will amount in total to just under half of 1% of the annual income of the economy. Can you imagine the river of money that will come together from four or five slices of bread to create a much better future for all citizens, for all the children, not just the wealthy few? The second pillar is the granted birth. Our new economic concept will start rebuilding the real economy right away and slowly grow reliable pension capital for all our newborn children, every single one. Every newborn baby will have a personal pension account opened in their name in the month of his or her birth. The special levy funds collected will be used in full to grant every child a capital amount say about $10,000. The money will be invested and reinvested in the real economy throughout the life of the individual baby with two clearly defined purposes in mind. The first will be to rebuild and grow the real economy. And the second, to grow a good basic pension income payable for 25 years of retirement for each individual. A capital amount granted at birth and invested prudently in the real economy can be expected to grow at the rate of 5% annually over the long term and become more than 30 times greater by age 70. At that time, each surviving individual will be entitled to receive a monthly pension based on the capital accumulated in their pension account of about $2,000 a month or $4,000 per couple, enough to live in dignity. The third pillar is the super trust, the proposed new investment structure. The special levy and granted birth will generate a lot of investment money. Billions. Yes, billions. And all this money will be directed to and invested by ethical, newly established investment funds. These super trust funds will be owned 100% by the children in whose name the funds have been granted, not by the government. They will be managed by independent, well-directed, guided, and supervised boards. The management fees will be very, very low, 
nearly negligible, unlike today. To achieve this, we need new smart legislation to create these funds. We need your support. We need your powerful voice so that government will agree to pass these new laws. No one will be able to touch this money throughout the years. The sole use of the growing funds will be to invest wisely in the real economy of the nation. A lot of it will go to small and medium-sized businesses, now starved for cash and know-how. And these are the only businesses that in most countries still create jobs. The children or their parents will not be able to touch the funds. The children, when they become adults, will not be able to borrow, mortgage, or otherwise use, spend, or commit the funds. This is vital. Our borrow and spend society needs firm external discipline. During the long 70 years in which the money is invested, the investments will rebuild the country's economy and improve the global competitiveness of the national economy. This is the magic. The super trusts will invest in decent rental housing. They will improve transportation, create new education and skills opportunities, energy generations, water reclamation, energy transmission, and more, and deal with environmental issues currently neglected. Many private investors never think of the long term, let alone investments allowed to prosper for 70 years before they pay any dividend. All income will be reinvested to generate further growth. Today, no such long-term plan exists. Instant profits dominate. The fourth pillar is MaxiLife. The MaxiLife concept, once realized, will give you the potential to leverage your own personal ambition and interests manifold throughout your lives. MaxiLife is a proposed software package. We know there are already many hundreds or thousands of diverse applications, but this is different. Today, many working people are asked to make tough decisions about what to do with their pension savings, where to invest them, and they are largely baffled. Sometimes their choices are bad ones. Governments want to give you more control over your pension, but they don't help you at all to know how to do this wisely. Today's financial choices are enormous and baffling. Non-experts are lost in the sea of confusing claims and data. The experts, all too often, are not acting in your interest either. People need to retrain, find new careers, and do this more than once. MaxiLife will be artificial intelligence driven and could become your closest, most loyal and trusted friend, should you so desire. Above all, MaxiLife software will help you track what you own, save, and owe. It will be there to better plan and assure your well-being at all times, especially in old age. MaxiLife will be cost-free, a good friend, but one who only offers advice when asked for it. For many of us, working people, especially the middle class, our days are full of struggle. To pay bills, seek better housing, keep our jobs, pay medical bills and rent, pay the mortgage, pay for our kids' schooling and daycare and, and many, many more. The global economy is in great chaos. Britain leaves the European Union. The United States is no longer a dominant superpower. Russia is bringing back the Cold War. China seeks hegemony in Asia. The Mideast is in ruins. Politics and economics are always intertwined, and chaotic politics inevitably leads to chaos in economics. The key reason society has failed so far to bring about real change in our economic system is this. To implement and pay for the significant changes we, the public, demand, countries need much improved productivity and significant growth of overall economic activity. This has not happened. Economic growth and productivity growth happen when prudent long-term capital investment is made in infrastructure and other added value capital projects. 
No country today has the means to fully generate this kind of activity, except perhaps China. Even when we know that social return on infrastructure investment is as high as 30%, risk-free, we're helpless to act. There is neither the political will nor the professional know-how. The power of the four pillar solutions, which we've presented to you in such detail, is simple. Put more resources into growing the real economy for a prolonged period. Make the future what it can be, what it must be. It is not easy to present complex economic and social challenges and opportunities in a relatively short video, as we have just done. We truly hope that what we have said is clear and understandable. But the real test, it will be now when you and all your friends start to bombard our elected leaders with demands to implement the Four Pillars program in full. The choice we face is simple. Prosperity versus stagnation or worse. Please go to our Facebook site and use all the ammunition we provide there to start the ball rolling. With today's social media, we all have at the tip of our fingers incredible power. Let's use it to avoid falling again into the traps of the past. Let's create a new and brighter future for ourselves and for our dear ones. We have the opportunity to transform the economy from today's irresponsible casino capitalism that benefits only the few to a democratic capitalism that offers opportunities and prosperity for all. We are talking about an asset-owning democracy. Today, the wealthy enjoy 8% real annual return on their wealth, which means that wealth doubles every decade or less, without them even lifting a finger. For the rest, even those who do manage to save, they get next to nothing for it, so they give up. This is unfair. We want everyone to enjoy a 5% return on their savings, rich and non-rich, so we can all have hope for a better future and a secure retirement. We, the current adult generation, are passing on to our descendants, our children and grandchildren, a worse future than we ourselves received. This is wrong, it is unacceptable, it is unnecessary. It can and must be changed. Join us. Join us now.